Then, whether afterlife consciously are arising by themselves, and further studied with the these events were erroneously perceived by beings, and in what circumstances. And as regards the members of the seventh and last group, they were called, Asan Gastrodismasivers. These members of the Asan society devoted themselves to the study of those manifestations of the three brain beings of their planet proceeding in them not as a result of various functionings coming from impulses of different kinds engendered by data already present in them, but as a result of cosmic influences coming from outside and not depending on the beings themselves. The three brain beings of your planet who became members of this society actually approached objective knowledge to a degree that had never been reached before and perhaps will never be reached again. And here it is impossible not to express regret that, to the great misfortune of the terrestrial three brain beings of all later epochs, just at the moment when, after incredible being efforts by the members of that great society, the required tempo of work had finally been established, both with regard to the conscious discernment of themselves and the unconscious preparation for the welfare of their descendants, just at the height of all their efforts, as I said, certain of them ascertained that something serious was soon to befall their planet. In order to determine the character of the serious event they anticipated, they dispersed over the whole planet and, shortly afterwards, as you already know, the second Transacalmian perturbation occurred to that ill-fated planet of yours. Well then, my boy, after this catastrophe, a number of the members of that great learned society who had survived gradually came together again and, having lost their native land, first settled with other surviving beings in the center of the continent of Graben Sea, but later, when they had somewhat come to themselves after this, cataclysm not according to law, they jointly decided to try to re-establish their society and perhaps to resume and fulfill and practice all the tasks that had formed its basis unfortunately, on that part of the surface of the continent of Graben Sea the abnormal conditions of being existence already established before the Catastrophe had by this time begun to boil furiously, and so these surviving members of the Ocean Society looked for another place on that continent for their permanent existence more suitable for carrying on their work, which demanded complete seclusion. They found a suitable place in the valley of the large river flowing northward on that continent and they all migrated there with their families, in order to continue in seclusion to fulfill the tasks undertaken by their society. The entire region through which this great river filled a first name, Sacronikari. This name was afterward changed several times and today that region is called Egypt, while the great river then known as Nipahuachi is now, as I have already said, called the Nile. Not long after these former members of the learned society of Ockans had settled on this part of the surface of the planet Earth, all the beings of our tribe then existing on that planet migrated to the same place. The relationship of the beings of our tribe with that part of the surface of your planet, and also with those former members of the society of Ockans who by chance had survived, came about as follows. 
I once told you that, just before the second Transipalian perturbation, R. Pythonet, during the prophecy had insisted that for the continuation of their existence on that planet all the beings of our tribe should migrate without delay to a definite part of the same continent, now called, Africa. The part of the continent indicated by the Python lay near the source of the river Nipahuasi, and the beings of our tribe existed there during the whole of the second Transipalmian perturbation and also later, when things became relatively normal and most of the surviving terrestrial beings had almost forgotten the catastrophe, and had again formed, just as if nothing had happened to them, one of their famous centers of culture in the very heart of the future. Africa. And while the former members of the Society of Afghans were looking for a suitable place for their permanent existence, they chanced to meet several beings of our tribe who advised them to migrate farther down the same river. with many of the former members of the Society of Afghans had begun on the continent of Atlantis and went back almost to the founding of that society Do you remember. I told you that when I descended to that planet for the first time, the beings of our tribe were assembled in the city of San Leos in order, with my participation, to find some way out of the difficult situation that had been created. Well then, those general meetings of ours were held in one of the chapter halls of the principal, cathedral, of the Society of Afghan, and from that time on good relations were established between the beings of our tribe and certain members of that society. And there, in the future Egypt, where both of these groups of beings had migrated as I have described, the relations of the beings of our tribe with those former members who had by chance survived, and also with their descendants, lasted without interruption almost until the departure of our tribe from your planet. The hope of the few surviving members of the Society of Afghans that they would be able to revive the society and carry out its tasks was not fulfilled nevertheless. Thanks to them alone, there was preserved in the presence of the beings of several generations after the loss of Atlantis descent and instinctive conviction of the need for what is called completed personal being. It was also thanks to them that certain attainments of the reason of the three brain beings there survived as long as their reason remained normal, and after a while began to be transmitted mechanically from generation to generation. Reaching the beings of quite recent periods and even certain beings of the present day. Among the results of the scientific attainments of the members of the Afghan society, transmitted by inheritance, were also unquestionably those imposing and ingenious structures that, during the course of sent of mine to your planet, I saw being erected by the beings breathing on that part of the present Africa. When I saw this new observatory with my own eyes, the expectations I had formed about it from everything our countrymen had told me were not justified. Nevertheless, this observatory and the other architectural works of the beings of that region proved to be exceedingly ingenious, and aroused in my common presence data that enriched my consciousness with a great deal of productive information. So that you may clearly represent to yourself 
yourself and understand how these structures were erected by the free brain being for this reason for the welfare of their being existence it will be enough. I think, if I explain to you in as great detail as possible how the particularity of their ingenious and practical inventions was manifested in this new observatory, on account of which I had decided to visit that place. To begin with, I must inform you of two facts related to the change in the common presence of these three brain beings who have taken your fancy. That at the beginning, while they were still existing normally in a manner becoming to all three brain beings in general and while they still had what is called always snooky in sight, they could perceive with their own eyes the visibility of all great and small cosmic concentrations existing beyond them during any process of the omnipresent Okagon of taking place in their atmosphere up to a distance proper to the vision of ordinary three brain beings. thereby brought the sensitivity of perception of their organ of sight up to what is called a oosultrasnopian state, acquired, as the three brain beings everywhere else, the possibility of perceiving, at that same distance, the visibility of all cosmic units whose arising and further existence depend upon crystallizations coming directly from the sacred geomer logo, that is to say, from the emanations of our most holy sun absolute. Conditions of ordinary being existence had become just there, and when, for reasons I have already told you about, great nature was compelled, among other restrictive measures, to degrade the functioning of their organ of sight to what is called a Perisnopian level, proper only to the presence of one brain and two brain beings. From that time on the three brain beings that were able to perceive the visibility of any great or small cosmic concentration situated beyond them only when the sacred process of Aiyaiyoa proceeded in the omnipresent active element, Okadanos in the atmosphere of their planet Earth, as they say, according to their understanding and perception, in the dark of night. Single quote. The second fact, also related to the degeneration of their sight to the Perisnopian level, is based on a law common to all beings, namely, that the results of any manifestation of the omnipresent Okadana are perceived only when the organ of sight is in immediate contact with the vibrations formed in beings which actualize the functioning of that being organ, enabling it at the given moment to perceive the visibility of cosmic concentrations situated beyond them. That is to say, the results of any manifestation of the omnipresent Okadana are perceived only when they take place within certain limits, depending upon the quality of perception attained by the given organ, and beyond these limits with its causes, momentum of the impulse dies down, or, to put it otherwise, these beings perceive the visibility of objects only when they are almost next to them. But if these results take place beyond the mentioned limits, this manifestation does not reach those beings in whose presence the organ of visual perception has been formed only by the results of the totality of Hedoplanos. Opportune to recall one of the profound sayings of Arnold Anasa Evans, which very neatly 
benefits the present case, that is, the degree to which the visual perception of your contemporary favorites is limited. This slide saying of his, seldom used there, consists of the following words, Show me the elephant the blind man has seen, and then I will believe that you really see a blind. the artificial devices for the observation of other cosmic concentrations which I had seen, and which were being constructed in that future Egypt on the initiative coming from the region of the remote descendants of the members of the learned society of Ogden. Any one of these unfortunate favorites of yours, in spite of the Sarisnopian, sight that had long before become inherent in them, acquired the power to perceive clearly at any time, as they say, as a day or night, the visibility of all those remote cosmic concentrations which during the process of the general harmonious movement fell within the sphere of their observation. For the limitation of their organ of visual perception they invented the following. Instead of placing their Tesplano or telescope on the surface of the planet, as was the custom in those days and still is, they placed it very deep within the planet, according to an idea which, by the way, had also come down to them from their remote ancestors and carried out their observations of cosmic time. Sensations found beyond the atmosphere of the Earth were specially hollowed out, stacked. The observatory I then saw had five of these stacks each of the molten towards the horizon from a different point in the space occupied by the observatory, but they all converged to a small underground hollow. Something like a cave from their respectivists of that time, called astrologers, made their observations for the purpose of studying, as I have already told you, the visible presences and the results of the reciprocal action of cosmic concentrations belonging to their own solar system as well as to other systems of our great universe. through any one of the five shafts, which looked out in different directions toward the horizon, according to the given position of their planet in the process of the common cosmic harmonious movement in relation to the cosmic concentration being observed.
rests on the legs of a lion means that these orders must be performed with the awareness and feeling of courage and the faith in one. Might, that property the best in the highest degree, among all the beings of the earth, by the beings to whom these legs belong, the mighty lion. The wings of the strongest and highest soaring of birds, these people, attached to the bird's trunk, constantly remind the members of our society that, during these labors, and while experiencing this inner psychic property of self-respect, one must meditate unceasingly on questions not concerned with the manifestations directly required for ordinary being existence. image of the head of our allegorical being in the form of the breasts of a virgin, this means that love is predominant always and in everything during the inner and outer functioning provoked by one's consciousness, that the love is to arise and exist only in the presence of concentration formed in the lawful parts of every whole responsible being in whom the host of our common father are placed. The head is fixed to the trunk of the bowl of amber signifies that this love should be strictly impartial, that is to say, completely separated from all the other functions proceeding in every whole responsible being. In order, my goal, for you to understand the meaning symbolized by the material known there is amber. I must add that amber is one of the seven planetary formations in the arising of this the omnipresent active element. Okadano enters with its three separate, independent, and sacred parts in equal proportion, and, in the process of planetary actualization, these intraplanetary and planetary formations serve to impede the independent flow of the three separate streams of these three localized sacred parts. At this point in his tale, the elf above paused for a moment, as if pondering something, and then continued. While I was describing to you what I then saw on a part of the surface of your planet still surviving today, where there existed certain direct descendants of the members of that truly great learned society of Ogdan, there were gradually revived in me, as a result of the manifestations of my being risen and due to the effect of various associations aroused by the visual impressions of the environment of that region. All the scenes in the whole series of associated thoughts evoking a certain being experiencing of mine that occurred during my last stay there when I visited contemporary Egypt and was sitting one day absorbed in thought of the foot of one of those ancient structures which has chance to survive from that period and are called today the pyramid. And in the general functioning of my reason there proceeded, among other things, the following reflection. Good. If not even one of the benefits for ordinary being existence formerly attained by the reason of the beings of the continent of Atlantis has come down by inheritance to contemporary beings of the planet. This could perhaps be logically justified by the simple fact that, for cosmic reasons neither listening to the three brain being there nor in any way depending upon them, the second great cataclysm not according to law occurred, in which not only this continent itself perished but also almost everything existing upon it. With Egypt, with not its magnificence still quite recent, there is no denying it. As a result of the first small 